my turn? <laughs> my turn. Maybe not. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm down with that. I'd like to I'd like to start today by by reading out of Isaiah chapter 42. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one who is who in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out, nor raise his voice, nor make his voice heard in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break. A dimly burning wick he will not be extinguished. He will faithfully follow and bring forth justice. He will not be disheartened nor crushed until he has established justice in earth. And the coastland will will wait expectantly for his law. Thus saith the Lord, who created the heavens and the earth, them out who spread out the earth and who gives it offspring, who gives breath to the people in it and spirit to those who will walk in it. Amen. It was a strange week, <laughs> and, uh, and and I wish I could. I wish we were still in Jude, because I could sing you "Hey Jude," but I can't do that anymore. <laughs> Those days are behind us now. And I was thinking about Christmas and and, and listening to the radio and watching some things on TV, and and it kept talking about the advent of Christmas. I went, ooh. Let me, first slide, please. Advent is an adverb, the arrival of a notable person or thing or event. Hmm. Now, we can have the advent of the Christmas season, but we can't have the adverse of the birth of Christ. Next slide. Because Jesus has been here and left the building, <laughs> you know that. And it's, and it's an interesting thing. We we have to, you know. And I'm not I'm not bad mouthing anything. I'm just saying we have a tendency to slip into a pre-prescribed line of thinking, and we and we and and we slide into it in a sense that. That, well, sometimes my Christianity doesn't get beyond that crib. And, and sometimes it doesn't really grow. And, 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 and you have to remember this. It was Jesus Christ came as a little teeny tiny baby. But why? That's the whole issue. Why? Why in the world would he do what he did? Next slide, please. John 3, 19. And this is the condemnation. And it's not the condemnation to those who believe. It is the condemnation of those who are in the dark. This is the condemnation that the light is come into the world and the men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Is that too hard to believe? You know, there's, we have, you know, we, we saw in, in Jude that, that we have an inherent tendency to act in our instinctive way. If I'm hungry, I eat. If I'm cold, I move to California. <laughs> If I'm, if I'm tired, I sleep. You know, 
you know, if we act according to our instincts. And quite frankly, most of our instincts, other than what I just placed, are evil. We sometimes have a desire to have what someone else has, which is covetousness, or vast amount of money, or that brand spanking shoe, new shiny Corvette sitting in the neighbor's driveway, or the neighbor's wife, or the neighbor's husband, or in our instincts are that we are never satisfied with who and what we are. There's always something better. Somebody across the street has got a better life than me. Somebody over there is, they've got it a little bit better than me, and I want theirs. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Next slide, please. But he came anyway. He came anyway. He knew. He saw. He looked and he went, them folks is nasty. <laughs> you know? And instead of going, you know, the flood wasn't a bad idea, except I didn't get them all. He, it was different this time. He looked and he said, them people, there's nothing but evil there. They need a savior. They need a savior. They don't need to, they need, they need a savior. They need something to come down there and rescue them from their own inherent being. God looked into the world and he saw that it was black and it was dark and it was evil and he came anyway. Not only that, he sent his son. Next slide, please. It says, The Son of Man has become eating and drinking and you say, behold, a gluttonous man, a drunkard, a friend of the tax collectors and sinners. <laughs> this baby, Jesus, didn't grow up with fancy robes and Gucci sneakers. He was like us. He was, he was like every one of us here. And, and a lot of people go, oh, no, 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 no. I, I don't want my Savior. I don't, I don't want my God. I don't want my Jesus to be as nasty as I know that I am. I, I, I want him, I, that, that, that pristine little baby in the crib is pristine little baby in the crib. You know, I mean, they, they smell good, and they're cute, and they cry, and they feed them. And... But here is a man that came eating and drinking, and you say, behold, a glutton, a man, and a drunkard. But if you take the tax lecture out of there, that is, the, that is my favorite, favorite piece of scripture. He's a friend to sinners. And brother, is he my friend. He's a friend to sinners. That just, that kind of blows me away. He, he didn't come down and condemn people. He came down and became people. You, you get that, that click. Now, for example, I'm going to give you an example. Next slide, please. 
Corinthians 11.11 11 says, No wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. You see now, our, the evil one disguises himself. He goes, I'm one of you. I can make all of those desires that you have come true. All you have to do is worship me. I, 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 and he puts on a, a false identity. And, and sometimes when, when you think of Jesus coming down out of heaven, that he, he, he stood, he stood in the day of creation and watched everything happen and spoke and went, oh, boom, boom, boom. And he's standing in pure light and, and he and his father and the Holy Spirit are standing together in, in this glorious stuff. You go, yeah, he's going to give that up and become like us. He's, you know, he's, he's going to go, yeah, Dad, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this, this beautiful Shekinah glory that I am cloaked in, and I'm going to set it aside, and I'm going to become a baby in a stinking manger, in a stinking barn with stinking animals, born to an unwed, unwed mother, someplace in a stinking desert. Yeah, I'm going to do that. But maybe I'll disguise myself as that. Maybe I'll disguise myself. No. No. Not like Satan. Satan comes and disguises himself as your best friend. He gives you information that only you know, which gives you power. He gives you things that, that, uh, that, that, that make you stand out above the rest. But he's a killer and a destroyer, and that's what he comes to seek and destroy. Jesus did not come in any sort of costume. He was born butt naked as a person. Next slide, please. It was no disguise. Jesus came as one of us. It's an interesting thought. As one of us. He could, be, he could, he could have been laying, if, if God had delayed, he could be laying in the delivery room today. But God, you know, his timing is better than mine. And I'm glad that he came when he did. But the thing was, humanity was his, and he owned it. And he, and he set everything aside that he could come as he did. Now, next slide, please. <laughs> and and here's, here's where it gets interesting. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered. Number one... If I'm the son of God and he says, you're going to earth and suffer, I'm going, nuh-uh. Next plan. Who in here likes to suffer? It is the thing that we avoid the most, isn't it? Isn't it that the thing? I mean, if, if you can right next to death. Suffering is second place, right? Nobody likes to suffer. We do things to avoid it. We build walls to make sure that it can't get to us. Although he was a son, although he was a son, he learned obedience from things that he suffered. Now, I want, I want to take you to the next plane. Wait a minute. He was God. He came down to earth. He created everything. He is the truth. He contains all the truth. What did he have to learn? I mean, he was the 
Spartanical Encyclopedia of All Knowledge. What did he have to learn? He had to learn how to be like you and me. And that was his study course. Humanity 101. How does it feel to smack your hand with a hammer? Yo, <laughs> oh, not good. How does it feel to smack your hand in a hammer and not curse your own self? <laughs> how, do you, how do you refrain from going into that instinct when it's so prevalent there and you want to and you want to ask your father to damn that finger and that hammer? He learned by suffering, which we all avoid. Hebrews 2.18, For since he himself was tempted in that which he has suffered, he was able to come to the aid of those who are tempted. Here's the deal. <laughs> he said he was tempted in every way. Now, you and I have done sins that we went, no, we don't want God to be tempted in that manner. At least I have. But unless he was, unless he fully understood everything that was going to come and titillate your instincts and say, step away from God and enjoy this, nobody's looking. He couldn't do it unless he was tempted in every way. And so he had suffered, that which he suffered. He's able to aid those who are tempted. There is suffering in temptation. Next slide, please. Jesus said, and therefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people through his own blood, suffered outside the gate. And I don't know that we understand this totally. You might understand that if you're in junior high and every kid's were bullying you and making fun of you and telling you you're the fat kid, and, you know, you might understand what outside the gate means. But in the Jewish culture, outside the gate means that you were cast out of the Abraham family and you weren't a Jew hardly anymore. You were gone. And that is something to the Jewish people You just don't do. And so you might say he was, he took on the idea of bullying. You're not good enough. You're, you're not accepted. You, 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 you know, go away. You're just, you just don't add up. And he suffered outside the gate. And then 1 Peter 2, 20 to 2, 21 says, for you have been called for this purpose. Uh-uh. For you have been called for this purpose since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you as an example to follow in his steps. No! Don't want to. Don't want to. But you understand... Suffering leads to perfection and establishment and ordination. That's what scripture says. Next slide, please. Here's the thing. Now, when we read this, you have to understand that all, you know, when God starts speaking to you, sometimes he starts speaking to you and then it switches to speaking about the present and the future and the past. And you sometimes sit there and go, huh? But here's the deal. Now God says, Isaiah 49, says God, 5 through 6, now, now God says, the Lord who has formed me from the womb to be his servant, now, everybody, well, well, that might be Isaiah. Isaiah said that. Well, it could be, yes. But it could be somebody else that we might know. For the Lord says to the form me from the womb to be a servant, 
to bring Jacob back to him so that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God is my strength. So Jesus came to bring Abraham's children back to him. But this is so good. I like this. But it's my son. He can do a lot more than that. I mean, why send him down to build a, a puddle in the creek when you could build the Hoover Dam? You know, why send him down to do a little thing? You know, it is too small of a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. Too little. You're going to do much more than that. To restore and pre then preserve the ones of Israel, I also make you a light to the nation so that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. You know, the thing is, <laughs> has that salvation reached you? You know, it, 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 I, I being a sinner was absolutely amazed that it reached me. I will tell you a, a story if you'd bear with me. I was once upon a time in the process of going through the steps of, of Alcoholics Anonymous and, and step four, I believe, is making a, a list of all the people you would harmed and make, made, make, you know, all the people you'd harm, and all the, all the, all the badness of your, of your character. And the next one is confess to, an, to, to, to God and to another human being the exact natures of your wrong. I could have jumped over this church with no help from jetpacks before I could do that. What? No, 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 you, you've got to confess your sin. And it, What? Okay, I'll do it to God. No, no. It says God and to another human being. Well, hell went to this. There's a, there's a thing called Crucial. It's called the short course in Christianity. And I had heard about it, and, and I had hoped they'd got there, and they'd, you know, you'd, get, you'd get robes and hoods on them, and you'd walk through the halls and go, oh, no, 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 no. I was really hoping it was going to be a monk experience, you know. And, and, but I got there and they had popcorn and playing guitars and, you know, party going on. I'm like, oh, well. But the first night we were there, they said, uh, listen, uh, tonight is a, is a night that we're going to give you the ability to confess your sins. Ding, 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 ding. I can do it here because ain't nobody knows me. That was my first thought. I can get away with telling somebody about my sins because nobody here knows me and they ain't never going to know me because I ain't never going to hang out in church. So they said, if you want to confess your sins, let us know. Well, I'm standing up, man, I'm back here. And they're like, oh, whoa, wait, wait a minute. We're, we're not ready yet. Well, I am. And they went, okay. And they took me down to this room. Have I told you this before? I have, haven't I? Well, they, they took me down to this room, and, and now you have to understand, in, in Alcoholics Anonymous, you get a chip. And, and if you get a chip, they say, keep that chip, but if you're going to have a drink, throw the sucker away, and then come back and get another chip, because that one's no good anymore. So, with my chip in my pocket, and my paper in my hand, I'm walking down the hall, and I walk in to this room that had a little frail Lutheran pastor in his gray shirt in, in, in the thing, and he's sitting there, and I'm going, oh, if I start telling him this stuff, he's going to run out of this room going, Satan's in there! you got to be kidding me. And so this little frail Lutheran pastor sitting there, 
And I'm going, oh, man, I'm, I'm going to scare him right out of his jockey shorts. And he ain't never run into anybody like me. And I walked in, and I sat down, and I said, and I kind of mumbled into him. I said, there's two steps in AA that I want to do when I'm here this weekend. The four and five of them explained what they were and how, what they were about. And, and so he sat there, and he went, okay. And I started into it, and I was, I was going, Lord, I, you know, I am, and, and, and stuff just started flowing through me. Dirty, rotten stuff that I had done, and I'd go, and there was this, and I'd hear this voice go, and you're forgiven. And I'd go, yeah, and there was this time that, you're forgiven. All I had to do was think about it, and it was poof. It, and he goes, and there was a time, and there was a time, and, and I'm going, and this stuff was just start rolling, and, and I didn't, I didn't know where this guy went. I didn't pay any attention to him at all. He was gone. It was me and God. And it was awesome. It was awesome. And when I got done, I'm like, and I look around, and there sat the little Lutheran minister. And I went, oh. And he looked at me, and he says, you got a chip? And I went, yeah. And he went, so do I. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> he was a drunk, just like me. And he was in the AA program, just like me. And he knew exactly what I was doing. And you don't think God sent him there to deliver me into the kingdom of heaven and wash me white as snow? Wow. Hallelujah. I'm like, yeah. I come blazing out of there and they're going, where are you going? I'm going home. They go, no, it's a three day event. I don't care. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Which just brings me to, I mean, this God who said, listen. Listen, I set aside glory. I set aside majesty. I set aside perfection. I set aside everything to become one of you. To become one of you that you might be saved to become one of us. Wow. Wow. You want to get crazy? You guys, some of you guys, have been, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to do this. I, I just want to sing God's praises for a little bit. And there's an old song, there's an old song that, that, I, that you, you're a Presbyterian, you know this, but I, I just want to, let's just, let's just, if you can, join in. And, and it goes like this. Can we get it? Maybe we're not supposed to. But it goes like this. You know the first verse. I know. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty Early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. You know the second verse? Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubims and seraphim falling down before thee, who work and art and evermore shall be. You ready? 
Holy, 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 Lord God, all the saints adore Thee, casting down Thy golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before Thee, who word and art and evermore shall be. Did you get them? Third verse. Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, they are eye of sinful man, thy glory may not see. Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee. Perfect to power in love and purity. Fourth verse. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.